The Space Race, a fierce competition between two of the world's superpowers to set a man on the moon and bring him back safely. It would prove the ingenuity of scientists and the determination of their nations. The space race plants its roots deep in Germany during World War II. As the Germans realized that they were losing the war, they knew they would need a major technological breakthrough in order to turn the tides of war. So they put their best engineers and scientists to the job of creating advanced weapons that might be able to win the war called Wunderwaffen, also known as Wonder Weapons. They did manage to come up with things like the first jet-powered fighter planes able to effectively shoot down Allied bombers and jet bombers that were almost impossible to intercept. But one of the most advanced of these weapons was the V-2 rocket. The V-2 rocket was the first ballistic missile with a significant range and was the German equivalent of the Manhattan Project. Designed in part by Werner von Braun, this weapon was capable of delivering 2,000 pound warheads from Germany to London, causing destruction and fear. Thousands of these rockets were launched at London, but fortunately they did not win the war. In fact, the career of the V-2 rocket had only begun. In the aftermath of the war, these Wunderwaffen weapons were collected by the United States and the Soviet Union, as well as the scientists that worked on them. The V-2 rockets in particular were taken by the United States to the White Sands Proving Grounds. There, Werner von Braun replaced the warheads with cameras and instruments, then sent them straight up to the heavens to take this. This is the first video ever taken from outer space. This footage was taken by what was once a weapon of destruction. Now it dawned an age of curiosity and technological advancement. The space race itself took place during the Cold War. It officially began when the Soviet Union and the United States, just days apart, publicly set goals to send satellites into orbit around the Earth in 1955. The Soviets quickly realized that being the first to reach the milestone would prove a major propaganda victory and were quick to take advantage of their existing military missiles to get to space, whereas Eisenhower was afraid of using military missiles, as they might promote real war and forced his scientists to use less effective research rockets. The Soviets famously were the first to put the satellite Sputnik into a sustainable orbit around the Earth. Weighing in at almost 200 pounds and capable of sending a signal back to Earth, it was an impressive feat. This Soviet success caused the United States to push its own satellite launch forward as not to fall behind, but the launch was rushed and resulted in failure. This was a major embarrassment for the United States. It was only until months later, using a military missile, that the United States could launch its first satellite into orbit. The next milestone to be met was launching a human being into orbit. The jump from launching a satellite into orbit and putting a man into space was huge. Both nations had to get comfortable with space launches before they could put a life on the line. The Soviet Union sent unmanned satellites into orbit around the sun 
and the moon before they were ready for manned missions. On April 12, 1961, Yuri Gagarin made his flight. He was launched into orbit around the Earth and became the first man in space as well as the first man in orbit. Yuri Gagarin's flight was legendary, not only for the Soviets, but for the entire world. Many believed that his flight was an accomplishment of mankind, not just of the Soviet Union. This flight also settled the definite lead that the Soviets had in the space race. The first American in space, Alan Shepard, completed his flight three weeks after Yuri, and it was only a suborbital flight. It was starting to become clear that the United States was falling behind in the space race. Many of the early milestones had already been taken by the Soviets. The only way the U.S. could score a major milestone was if a goal was set far enough into the future that the U.S. could catch up. John F. Kennedy did exactly we that. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Along with a long-term goal to reach the moon by the end of the decade came the Gemini family of rockets. A series of two-man spacecraft used to prepare astronauts for a mission to the moon. These rockets were boosted by the Titan II missile, normally used to deliver nuclear warheads now carried a payload of two astronauts into space. As Gemini was progressing, the Soviet Union began to fall behind in the space race. A shift in power resulted in the cancellation of some of their space program. And most importantly, their N1 heavy lift rocket was a failure. The rocket's 30 small engines had a high failure rate that resulted in every test launch of the rocket being a failure. Without a reliable heavy lift rocket, they were still able to send men on flybys of the moon, but never had the lifting power to land people on it. The Saturn V heavy lift rocket for the United States Although technically less powerful than the N1, was more reliable with only five large engines and was going through successful stationary testing. The United States was almost ready for a manned moon mission as the early Apollo missions began carrying out long duration flights and flybys of the moon to prepare for Apollo 11. On July 16, 1969, the Apollo crew of Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins took off from Kennedy Space Center on a trip to the moon. After a four-day voyage, the Eagle was landed on the moon. Over half a billion people were watching as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin set foot on the moon for the first time. This great accomplishment for mankind marked the finish line for the space race. 